presents Hollywood. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Ronald Reagan and Patricia Neal in John Loves Mary. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley, speaking to you tonight from Gallup, New Mexico. Greetings from Gallup, New Mexico, ladies and gentlemen. In selecting tonight's script, we look for a certain kind of a play with no serious message, no axe to grind, no purpose, but the very desirable one of entertaining you. And I know that's just what John Loves Mary will do. My friend Norman Krasner wrote the Broadway success, which became a Warner Brothers hit on the screen. And tonight, our stars play their original picture roles. First, Ronald Reagan. You know, I can't think of a better choice for a typical American G.I. And then, Patricia Neal, whose fresh beauty is perfect for the American girl back home. You know, there's nothing more commendable than doing a good deed for a buddy, such as loaning him money or, or your only clean shirt. But I think you'll agree that in John Loves Mary, John goes just a little too far. But before you discover John's great sacrifice... I want to remind you about next week. Uh, after our play tonight, we'll announce a special attraction for our closing broadcast of the season. One of your favorite pictures with two of your extra favorite stars. A combination you've requested in your letters many times. And we'd like to thank you for those letters because you've also been kind enough to tell us that Lux Flakes are a favorite of yours, too. Now, for many seasons now, your favorite stars and Lux Flakes have been a perfect combination. Now, John Loves Mary, starring Ronald Reagan as John and Patricia Neal as Mary. Back in 1943, a young man named John Lawrence left his sweetheart Mary and went off to war. Four terrible years of waiting have gone by. But today, John is coming back. This morning, he landed in Norfolk. Twenty minutes ago, he was due in New York. And right now, the door buzzer should be ringing. He's back. He's home. Oh, darling. 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 I left the door open, darling. Shall I? Shall I open my eyes? Okay. Oh. But who are you? Well, I was asked to come here. Who asked you? John Lawrence. John? When did you see John? Not today. Oh, no. I haven't seen him in two years. He phoned me from Norfolk. Oh. Well, my name's Mary McKinley. How do you do? Oh, I know your name. He mentioned it often enough. I'm Fred Taylor. Fred Taylor? You're Fred Taylor? Uh-huh. Would you mind if I kissed you? Huh? Oh, thank you, Fred. Thank you for John. Thanks. Oh, but, but, but... You say you saved his life. Oh, he would have done the same for me. But you carried him in, in your arms like a baby for 200 yards. With shells flying all around. Oh, it was mostly just 38 caliber stuff, that's all. I'm forever obligated to you. Oh, well... Fred, how did John sound to you on the telephone? I mean, his voice. It seemed deeper to me than when he left. It could be. He was a sergeant, you know. Oh, oh, this uh, package, it's for John. Oh? It, it, it's his suit. <laughs> he sure seemed in a hurry to get out of uniform. <laughs> Weren't you? <laughs> I changed into my civvies in the men's room at the Washington station. Mary! Oh, no! You get out. You turn right around and leave. Mary! You heard me. I planned for four years how you were going to see me. And I wasn't going to be standing here. I was going to be standing there. And, and our song on the phonograph and, and everything. And, oh, what's the use? Oh, John. Oh, darling. Mary. You old son of a gun, you look great. Fred, look at him, Mary. You know, I've never seen you in civilian clothes before. <laughs> well, there's yours on the chair there. I picked out a gray suit. Oh, swell. I wouldn't be here, Mary, if it weren't for him. Oh, sure you would. Saved my life, that's all. Sit down, Fred, sit down. And you, young lady, you come and sit down here. Ah, a little bit closer. There, that's better. Now, what are you doing, Fred? Well, 
I got my old job back at the telephone company. Ever see any of the fellas? Oh, sure, Bennett and Goodman and... What's happened to O'Leary the louse? I hope. Our lieutenant. No, I remember O'Leary. He's the one you disliked. Disliked? Where is he, Fred? Well, he's uh, still in uniform. <laughs> it's an usher at the Strand Theater. <laughs> no. Yeah. Orchestra or balcony? Balcony. Let's pay him a visit some night and push him into the orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> well, honey, what's the matter? You're crying. Well, I'm happy. Can I be happy? Well, look, I, I, I think I'll just run along. No, no, I, no, no. Now, please. Well, I... I no, no, I, you sit right down. Now, let's go on with your war experiences. I'm very interested. Tell me about the girls you met. <laughs> John never even looked at another girl. I give you my word. <laughs> look, you saved his life once. You don't have to keep it up. Now, come on, John. There must have been some attractive girl. Mary, you hit upon a very unfortunate subject. Many soldiers really fell in love overseas. Very often, there were unhappy endings. You? Oh, no, not me. Fred. Fred. Oh, I'm so terribly sorry. Please forgive me. Oh, it's all right. I fell in love with an English girl. We got separated, and I never could find her again. Oh, how dreadful. Yes, yeah, she was an acrobatic dancer. She used to walk on her hands and do a little dance, kind of, and sing a song all at the same time. I was there, Mary, when Fred asked her to marry him. Yes, only very next day was D-Day. We, we went to France. And you couldn't find her again? No. Well, the only address we had was the nightclub. By the time we came back, it was gone. Blitzed. Well, I guess I took it pretty bad for a while. Drank a lot. Oh. Uh, would, would you excuse me, please? I promised Mother I'd phone the minute John came back. She's in Washington. She is? Yeah. Lily was quite a girl, Fred. Uh, you shouldn't have brought it up. I won't be in the dumps for days. I got a surprise for you. I saw Lily. You, you saw her? Where? London. Did, did she ask about me? You were all she talked about when she wasn't crying. What was she crying for? Well, I told her how you felt. The days you spent searching for her, she darn near had hysterics. No kid. So we went over to the embassy to find out how she could get to America. Hmm? Get to America? And there was only one way. Maybe it was the wrong way. Maybe I made a mistake. But I had to do it. Do you know how? How? As the wife of an American soldier. She's arriving in New York the day after tomorrow. You, you married Lily? Well, you don't mind, do you? Holy mackerel! She gets off the boat, then you and she take the first train for Reno. Holy mackerel! You said that. <laughs> it takes six weeks to get a divorce in Reno, and ten minutes later you can get married. John, I... I don't know what to say. Well, don't you think I owe you that much? Holy mackerel! What about Mary? Oh, I'll tell her. Mary will wait six weeks. That's the kind of a girl she is. John, I... I don't know what to say. Wait a minute. Mary? Holy mackerel! Come Phone doesn't answer. Well, I just have to call Mother later. Here. Can't say you know night. It's for you, Doug. Well, wait till Fred goes. How about it, Fred? I want to be alone with my girl. John, you stay right here, Fred. We'll cheer you up. But he is all cheered up, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Well, I'll phone you tomorrow, okay? Okay, I'm uh, very glad to have met you. And I'm happy to have met you. Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter with that guy? He seems all right to me, darling. And I've got other things on my mind. Come here. Oh, darling. Darling. To kiss you again. To have you in my arms again. Oh, I love you. Mary, where is everybody? Your father and mother. Washington, darling. Ah, oh, yes. How is the senator? Oh, he still eats the wrong things, and they still disagree with him. Now, what kind of food would have nerve enough to disagree with your father? <laughs> <laughs> darling, you don't have to tell me anything you did overseas. I mean, with girls. All right, dear. All right what? All right, I won't tell you. Four years is a long time. You were lonely. I wasn't lonely. There were four million fellas with me. <laughs> if there was a girl, you wouldn't tell me, would you? Would you want me to? No. Was there? <laughs> Darling? Yes, dear? I want to see where you were wounded. Oh, now, Mary. But I've made up my mind. 
If you can be shot, the least I can do is look. Oh. All right. Wait till I take my shirt off. I won't get sick. I promise. I prepared myself. I won't look until you're ready. Tell me when. You can look. Where? Right here. My left shoulder. Is that all? Is that all? What did you expect to see through me? Why, it's so tiny. Tiny? That was a thirty-eight caliber bullet. Well, that couldn't kill anybody. Oh, no? Well, just let me tell you something. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Good. As long as I got my shirt off, I may as well change my clothes. I wonder if that gray suit still fits me. Darling, after all. Ah, it won't take me a second. You just run in the next room, try phoning your mother or something. John, I keep thinking about Fred and that English girl. I feel so sorry for him. You, um, you know, she may still be alive, Mary. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? What makes you say that? Well, her name wasn't on any of the casualty lists. Does Fred know that? I never told him. Why not? Well, if she's still alive, he'll try to find her. It takes years to get anybody into this country under the quota. Years? So don't you think it would be kinder just to let them forget each other? I do not. And I think that's very unfeeling of you. You're sure now? John, you must tell him. Then just a minute. Wait till I get my pants on. I want you to listen very carefully to something I'm going to say. Something that you're... Oh, hello. Well. John, did someone come in? Just your father and mother, dear. Young man, put on your trousers. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I, I was just showing Mary where I was wounded. And... I am as good as your shoulder. Dad, why, John was hit by a thirty-eight caliber bullet. You can be killed by that. I was in the First World War. We had bullets then, too. Oh, father, this is John. You haven't even said hello to him. I didn't leave the United States Senate just to say hello to John. And now, young man, I'll thank you to go inside and put your trousers on. <laughs> Certainly, sir. Thank you. Mother, why didn't you tell me you were coming back? Well, dear, I tried. Your mother had no intention. It was my idea. I must say, Phyllis, trying to seclude your own daughter with a strange young man. Father, you've known John for years. I don't understand your behavior either. At least I hope I don't. Why didn't you tell me he was coming home? Answer me that. Frankly, I wanted some time alone with him. Well, that's frank enough. You know. What for, may I ask? Senator McKinley, may I say something? Well, I understand your feelings, sir, as a father. Thank you. But I took it for granted that my intentions toward your daughter were above suspicion. Well, they're not. I'm a senator. <laughs> we love each other, sir. I believe you do, which is why I haven't knocked you down. But that doesn't give me any hint as to your intentions. Why, marriage, sir. You don't have to marry me, John. Mary, what are you saying? Of course I'm going to marry you. No wonder your father feels this way. Well, Senator McKinley, I love your daughter very much. I would consider it a great honor if you would give your permission for our marriage. Uh, after a suitable engagement, of course. Well, you have it. Oh, darling, that was beautiful. You surprised me. Well, you surprised me. Didn't you know I was going to marry you? Well, until a girl does, she's never certain, John. <laughs> oh, John, I've always liked you, and I hope you'll be very happy. Thank you, Mrs. McKinley. Now then, I can spend only a few days in New York. You'll apply for your marriage certificate tomorrow, then the three-day waiting period. Let's see, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. You can be married on Wednesday, and then I can leave for Washington. Uh, tomorrow? The, the license, I mean? Well, why not this afternoon? You'd save a whole day. Look, uh, I, uh, I thought we'd be engaged for a while. Darling, we're engaged right now. We're going to be engaged for three whole days. Three days? I, I never heard of a three-day engagement. I, I thought six weeks was the minimum. Socially, I mean. I consider you've been engaged for four years. I give my permission. And so do I, and so do I. What's the matter, dear? Hot in here, isn't it? It is? Well, then why don't we... Oh, who's that? Fred! The, the door was open, so... Oh, come in. Uh, Mrs. McKinley, Senator McKinley, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Fred Taylor. How do you do, Fred? You, do? you are about to be a best man. John and I are being married on Wednesday. Oh, really? Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday? <laughs> Fred, I'm glad you're here. You see, Senator, there's something I'd like to tell you. Well? Fred is my best friend, sir. My very best. When I was wounded... Is this the young man that saved your life? Yes, it is. Mr. Taylor, you're a very brave young man. Thank you. Picked me up in his arms like a baby. Shells hitting all around us. But he brought me in. He saved my life. Fred, I'd like to thank you again. Uh, may I please use the telephone? Why, certainly. Uh, thank you. Senator McKinley, would you say I owe this man a great deal? I most certainly would. 
There's nothing I could do for him that would be too much, is there? Well, well I should... Uh, hello? Maternity ward, please. Yes, I'll wait. Well, <laughs> you know what I thought Fred just said? Maternity ward. That's what he did say. Oh, no. He, oh, he couldn't have. Why would he Maternity say... Maternity ward? This is Mr. Taylor again. Any news about, uh, about my wife? 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 Thank you. Maternity ward? Fred, you're married. Yeah, yeah, and I'm having a baby. Uh, no, 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 that is my wife is. Oh, 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 oh how no. wonderful. Oh. oh, Mother, you just don't know the story behind this. I, I, I don't believe it. Oh, Fred, I'm so happy for you, I think I'm going to cry. Oh, no. Oh. Why, Mary, you're certainly excited about this baby. Oh, oh it isn't only the baby. He's married. Well, I should hope so. <laughs> but you don't understand. Fred had a terribly tragic love affair, and he was able to forget. You... You were never going to forget Lily. You were going to remember Lily to your dying day. What do you expect me to do, join a monastery? Yes, you loved her so much. Couldn't live without her. Well, how about your advice? Life must go on. Well, I went on. You certainly did. John, shame on you. Are you begrudging Fred his new happiness? You bet I am. This is your best friend. He saved your life. Who asked him to? Oh, oh it's Warner. Oh. He gets him every once in a while. And loosen his tie. Oh. Get some brandy. Oh, no, oh, darling. Don't cry. <laughs> say something. Please, say something. Holy mackerel. <laughs> stars return in Act Two of John Loves Mary. Here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. I predict, John, a rise in home acrobatics when Warner Brothers' new picture, The Flame and the Arrow, is released. Oh, how come? Boys copying Burt Lancaster. <laughs> he does some of the most difficult and dangerous stunts I've seen in years. And such charm. Boyfriends will have to become acrobats and expert archers if they want to race. The girls may object to being chained, as Virginia Mayo is, so she can't escape. Isn't she lovely in those medieval costumes? Ah, uh, Virginia's always lovely. Even in the cut-off trousers she wears in one scene. I think the studio purposely put that scene in the flame and the arrow to show off her beautiful legs. You know, Virginia got her chance in pictures because of her perfect legs. They look extra stunning in nylons. Well, nylons make even lovely legs look lovelier. Of course, they must fit beautifully and never, never have a run. Now you're describing stockings that are washed every night with Lux Flakes. Even before the first wearing. That helps new nylons fit even better. And, of course, colors stay truer when they get gentle Lux care. But the big thing is the added wear you get with Lux Flakes. No other soap, no other washing product can make nylons last longer. Runs come faster when you rub stockings with cake soap or use a strong soap. Strain tests on identical stockings prove that Lux Flakes makes stockings last not just longer, but twice as long. Virginia Mayo wears the sheerest nylon she can buy. But she gets simply wonderful wear because she always insists on Lux Flakes. And that's true of ever so many Hollywood stars. Lux is wonderful care for everything washable. Gives all your nice things that lovely Lux look. Act two of John Loves Mary, starring Ronald Reagan as John and Patricia Neal as Mary. Three days from now, John is going to marry Mary. But he can't marry Mary because he already has a wife. In desperation, John and Fred have hit upon an idea. It's evening now, and Senator McKinley has taken his family and prospective son-in-law to a nightclub. Uh, so, hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, glad you could join us, Mr. Taylor. Well, boy or girl? Uh, not yet. Doctor says it might be tomorrow, but he won't guarantee anything. <laughs> uh, did you get your marriage license yet? Yep. And you took your blood test? Yep. Well, then I guess you'll get married on Wednesday. Yep. Oh, excuse me, Senator. There's a call for you from Washington. Yep. Oh, thank you. Now, James, no matter what they say, you're going to stay here for the wedding. Uh, don't worry, John. I won't let you down. Thank you. I appreciate that, sir. My nose is awfully shiny. Like me to come and parry for you? Yes, dear. We'll just be a moment. John. Huh? Dwell not on saying goodbye. It does not prolong the being together. Only the party. Goodbye, dear heart. So long. So long. Isn't he wonderful, Mother? How does he think of those things? Well, did you get somebody? 
Yeah, I think everything's going to be all right. Oh, I never should have done it. Done what? Mary Lily, just to get her into the United States. She'll be here Tuesday. All right, don't get hysterical. You did it for me. Anyway, the important thing now is for you to get out of town. Oh, I just hope Lieutenant Harris can do it. I always like that guy. But getting somebody to impersonate an Army officer. They can court-martial you for that. Uh, John, I didn't get Lieutenant Harris. But I thought... Well, he said he couldn't take a chance. You see, he's got a wife and two kids. So you got Bennett. Uh, I'm nervous about Bennett. Oh, well... If I'd known it was going to be Bennett, I'd never have agreed to it. uh, Well, you don't have to worry about Bennett because I didn't get him either. Well, who did you get? Well, no, no, no. Don't get panicky. Fred, who did you get? Well, we need somebody who can lie, right? Well, who's a born liar who's had plenty of practice besides? Out with it. Who is it? Who is who? Who? Oh, uh, if you don't mind, Senator, I'd like to suggest a toast uh, to John. Of course. And may the only uniform he sees from now on be the uniform of a Strand Theater usher. That's a Strand Theater? Oh, no. There he goes again. Oh. What's the matter oh, with the no. order? Oh, Just no. like I said. <laughs> I'm glad you're feeling so much better this morning. Oh, I'm I'm much better, thanks, I think. Well, I've got some news that should really cure those warners. Oh, let me tell him, Father. Father spoke to the mayor, and the mayor's agreed to marry us himself. Eleven o'clock Wednesday in his office. He had a transit committee meeting, but he was kind enough to postpone it. Oh, well, it seems a shame to make the mayor postpone it. And then after the ceremony, John, we'll have a little reception here for all the close friends and the family. It's just me. Can I come in? Fred, any news? Well, boy or girl? Uh, Nothing. Not a thing. Not yet. You told us the doctor said it was going to be today. Well, if he doesn't come up with something pretty soon, I'm going to change doctors. (laughs) Hello, Fred. Hello, John. Uh... Was there an officer here this morning, an army officer? Why, no, I don't think so. Army officer? You see, I stopped at the Harvard Club just in case John hadn't left yet, and uh, there was this army officer. Well, what did he want? He just asked for you, and I gave him this address. Who could he be, John? Oh, (laughs) just probably one of our old officers wondering how I'm getting along. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Wondering if we could help you out, lend you some money or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll get it, Mother. Oh, well, I'm almost there now. It's all right. I'll see who it is. It's old Larry. You think he can do it? I rehearsed him ten times. Well, come in, Lieutenant. Oh, thank you, sir. I was told I could find Sergeant Lawrence here, sir. And you found him. Oh, how do you do? How do you do, sir? Is something wrong with our sergeant? You're, uh, not missing a tank or anything? Uh, nothing like that, sir, but I have some rather unpleasant news. You, uh, you have? Terribly sorry, but there's a job the Army needs you for. I'm afraid you're in for another 60 days. No. No, that's not fair. No. No, it isn't, Lieutenant. 60 days? Well, that's too bad. Oh, why do you need him, sir? Oh, we have a tremendous property disposal job to do. Captured enemy equipment. Short of trained men and... Well, somebody's got to do it, you know. But he's been overseas four years. He just came back. Oh, it's kind of a rough deal, miss, but ours not to wonder why. Ours but to do and die. Where did he have to die? I mean, go. <laughs> well, there's a storage depot out in Nevada. In Nevada? Oh, that's too bad, John. Yeah. But I guess there's no use crying over it. I'm going, too. If John's going, I'm going. But there are no quarters for ladies, just barracks. Well, I'll, I'll live in the nearest town, then. There must be a town somewhere. Oh, it's quite a ways out. I, I don't care. I'm going. Uh, I, I don't think you should, honey. John. But I, I'd be so unhappy thinking about you in a hotel room. Anyway, the sergeant's got to leave tonight. Tonight? Well, he's not going. Mary. I don't care. It's just too much. He's not going. You go back and tell them he absolutely refused to consider it. And if they're sensible, they'll get somebody else. But it doesn't work that way, ma'am. Yeah, I told my draft board to get somebody else. It just doesn't work, Mary. I apologize for my daughter, Lieutenant. Oh, that's all right, sir. Don't feel bad, Mary. It's only for 60 days. It's a lifetime. I've waited four years already. I'll write you every day and I'll call you regularly. I'm tired of letters. I want you. I'll be 60 years old and I'll still be waiting for you to marry me. Mary, you're proceeding from facts to emotion. And are you just going to stand there and not do anything? You're a senator. Call up some of those fancy generals who are always hinting for promotions. 
They can get John out of this. Well, it's hard for me to believe my ears. You'd ask me to use my high office to get John off? Yes, I certainly would. The Germans are back to their wives and sweethearts. The Italians are back. The Japanese are back. The only woman in the whole world who's been kept apart from the man she loves is me. Who won the darn war, anyhow? Now, now, Mary, listen to reason. I've been criticizing the War Department for years. I can't ask a favor. <laughs> All this is just another instance of poor management. Well, that's no satisfaction to Mary. Well, it is to me. Uh, I wouldn't like you to use influence, sir. Well, thank you at least, John. Oh, I need a drink. Mary, honey, you mustn't take it this way. I wouldn't like you to use your influence, sir. Oh, go away, go away. Oh, Mary, please. Go away. But but where are you going? I'm going out to some fresh air. Alone. This place is getting too stuffy for me. Yes, join me in the drink, Lieutenant. Don't mind if I do. Help yourself. Oh. Oh, I feel my headache coming on. Oh, no, dear. Why don't you go to a movie and relax? The doorman downstairs said he saw you in a new thrill yesterday. Really? Uh-huh. Where? I think he said the Paramount. It's a strand. Oh, are you sure, Lieutenant? I'm positive. Well, then we'll go. I wonder what the feature picture is. Don Juan with Errol Flynn. The complete bill starts at 12, 22, 3, 10, and 5, 58. <laughs> How do you know? Why, I have... Uh, Mrs. Uh, McKinley, uh, those people you invited to the wedding. Oh, huh? oh, how awful. James will just have to send them telegrams and tell them it's postponed. Oh, very well. There's a public stenographer down in the lobby. I'll dictate them. Come along, Phyllis. Mm -hmm. Pleased to have met you, Lieutenant. Uh, pleasure's all mine. I never met a senator before. Better wait here for Mary, John. Uh, yes, yes, I will. You know these women. Oh, well, let's plan on having dinner together. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Goodbye. Well, hand it over. Huh? Uh, we owe O'Leary 50 bucks. Yeah. $50 for 10 minutes' work? That's a little more than they're paying at the Strand, isn't it? Mm. What's playing at the Strand? Don Juan with Errol Flynn. 1222, 3 Tran, and 558. Holy mackerel. Oh, I forgot myself. Now, just what are you two guys trying to cook up? But I told you. You don't think I fell for it, do you? A mining business in Nevada? What's wrong with that Mary dame? Nothing's wrong with her. And why are you running out? I told you, you've got business in Nevada. Malarkey. Where's that scotch? You're going to be stumbling around that balcony. I can hold it. And my men will cover up for me. I'm not just an usher there, you know. I'm the balcony major. <laughs> major at the Strand. We knew you'd make good, O'Leary. Yeah, the Army didn't treat you right. Three years, a lieutenant. You're darn right they didn't. There's no nonsense at the Strand about whether you went to West Point or not. Well, here's to the war. A great little war. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, sarcastic, huh? Well, you two guys don't fool me a bit. And you didn't fool me overseas, either. Didn't have any dames, huh? What about London, and what about Lily? Lily? Yeah, rang the bell, huh? <laughs> didn't think I knew about that, did you? Tried to cut me out with Lily, didn't you? All the time I'm in there pitching, you're giving me the needle. Oh, you're wrong, Lieutenant. What a thing. <laughs> ah, but all she wanted was to get married. Come to America. I got that line, too, see? Only I got around it. <laughs> That's a lie. Well, how do you know? Because I saw her every night. And after you went to France, you didn't. You dog faces left two weeks ahead of me, remember? Why, you dirty lion, no good... Who's that? How do I know? Well, don't get excited, I'll leave. And I'm taking that bottle with me, see? Okay, take the bottle, and would you mind going out through the kitchen? Not at all, dog face, not at all. Show me the way to go. I'm sorry. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Good morning. Hey, good morning. I'm looking for Sergeant John Lawrence. I'm John Lawrence. Oh, you are? Well, I'm from the American Red Cross. I guess you can come in, Mrs. Lawrence. Lily! <laughs> Hello, John. Lily! Ready? Well, aren't you going to kiss me? Uh, why, yes, Lily. Oh. He's my friend. We were in the Army together. Oh, I, oh, I see. He saved my life. Of course. I'm sorry you had to come here, Mr. Beechwood. I understood I was to call to the Red Cross tomorrow. Well, she is... She's still kissing him. Hey, he's a good friend. <laughs> oh. 
So why has she been here since yesterday? Yesterday? And she came on the Queen Mary. Oh, so we take very good care of our war brides. The uh, Harvard Club suggested you might be reached here. Oh. When you uh, didn't meet her yesterday, Mrs. Lawrence was terribly upset. Oh, I thought they were sending me back to England. Yes, she struck our Mr. Abernathy with a small suitcase. Oh, but you've been ever so kind, Mr. Beechwood. That's, that's quite all right. Uh, uh, goodbye, and uh, uh, good luck to you both. Oh, uh, the uh, Red Cross also maintains an information service for prospective mothers. Yes, well, we'll remember that. Thanks again, Mr. Beechwood. <laughs> goodbye. Oh, my, isn't this lovely? Golly, Freddy, New York's just like the cinema. I'm never going to leave New York. Except for the trip to Reno. Yeah, oh, you'll love Reno, Lily. Oh, there was a soiler on the boat who told us girls never to go west of New Jersey. Uh, well, it's only for six weeks. Oh, well, as long as Freddy's with me. Yeah, well, um, well, there's been a slight change in our plans, Lily. Shine. Uh, you're not going to Reno with Fred. Oh, I'm not. You're going with me. I'm taking you. We're leaving tonight. Well, why you? What's the matter with Freddy here? Oh, well, it's just not um, convenient for me to go right now. What do you mean, convenient? Well, I'm uh, expecting a relative. Well, <laughs> well, this is a fun piece of news, I must say. Lily, listen. Fred's got something to explain to you, but this isn't the place for it. Why don't you take her to some nice, quiet place? It's quiet here. Well, it won't be for long. Fred, will you? Yeah, yeah. Come on, Lily. Let's go somewhere. I forgot my wife's dress book. Those telegrams. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, Senator McKinley, may I present Miss Furbish? Oh, how do you do, I'm sure. Hmm. How do you do? She's a friend of Fred's. Just got over from England. Oh, really? Uh, how do you like us? Oh, I think New York's just lovely. I do hope it's nice out west. Oh, going out west? Yes, I suppose I shall have to. I hear it isn't very settled. What is it like west of New Jersey? Republican. Oh. <laughs> well, ever so nice meeting you. Ta ta. Uh, goodbye, Miss Furbish. Uh, Fred. Uh, yes, sir? Any news of your wife and baby? Uh, no, sir. Oh, I... <laughs> What's the matter with her? I, I can't imagine, sir. You're perspiring again. Yes, sir. Well, Mary's back. She's down in the lobby with her mother. Now, about your going to the bar, then. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, son, but I just can't use my influence to keep you here. Oh, I understand your position exactly, sir. Well, I wish you'd explain it to Mrs. McKinley. She thinks I became a senator to get a low license number. <laughs> right is here, General. Father's General Biddle. Imagine, we just met him in the lobby. Wasn't that lucky? Hello, Senator. Well, I've been trying to get an appointment with you for six months. How are you, General? And my fiancé, Sergeant John Lawrence. So you're the young man the Army's persecuting. Well, we'll soon see about that. Oh, but marry a general. Oh, darling, it's all right. The general's already called the War Department. He phoned from the lobby, and they're going to call him right back as soon as they find the roster or something. He knew your serial number just like that. He says it certainly seems like undue hardship. Now, look, General, I don't want anything done that smacks of favoritism. Oh, that's right, sir. Why, I wouldn't show this boy any more favoritism, Senator, than I would expect from you. Oh, the general understands perfectly, Jerry. Hello? Yes? Yes, just a moment. Your call, General. Oh, thank you. Hello, Colonel. Yeah, but I told you before, it's in Nevada. The story depot in Nevada. Hmm? Yeah, well, just a minute. Uh, you're sure it wasn't something that just sounded like Nevada? The lieutenant said Nevada. Nevada, Colonel. Well, the devil, there's no storage depot in Nevada. Look in Ryan's desk. It's locked. Where's Ryan? His day of exercise? Cancel all exercises on the fourth floor. There'll be a staff meeting in my office 9 o'clock Monday morning. What is it? Is uh, something wrong, General? We, uh, we're reorganizing the department, Senator. There's just a little temporary confusion. But you can't locate the storage depot. You mean to say that John still has to go because they can't find a tiny piece of paper in Washington? A tiny piece of paper? They can't find a whole depot. <laughs> well, we'll find it, Senator. We'll find it. But when? John's leaving tonight. Uh, John, when you get to the depot, you send the War Department a telegram. Tell him you found it. 
we know where it is, Senator. It's just a clerical error, that's all. General Biddle, that's not going to stand in the way of John's getting excused. Mary. She's right, son. I am taking it upon myself to remove you from that roster here and now. Oh, but, but General, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But, but what about the travel roster? Well, I guess the General can still do something. No. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I cannot accept favoritism. I'm going to Nevada. I owe it to my buddies. John. I didn't enlist for one year or five years. I, I enlisted for as long as my country needs me. And they need me in Nevada. <laughs> Mary, you, you don't know what this means to me. Don't you want to get married? Doesn't that mean anything to it's, you? It's my duty. Your duty? Who do you think you are, Nathan Hale? <laughs> well, I, I have to live with myself. Well, live with yourself. You're not going to live with me. I couldn't marry anybody so noble and patriotic. I'd be too impressed. Mary, darling, please. No use, John. You just don't want to marry me. I've known since the first ten minutes you were home. You've been distracted and well, just plain bored. Well, I've had a lot on my mind. Didn't we agree to get married? You were trapped into it, and now you don't know how to get out. Mary, that's not true. You're afraid of my father. Why should anyone be afraid of me? I'm not afraid of your father. Oh. And you're embarrassed for me. Well, well, you needn't. I'm not. I tell you, I'm not embarrassed. No, so, as far as I'm concerned, you can go to Nevada. Go on. Go! Mary! Before our stars continue with Act Three of John Loves Mary... We return you to New Mexico for a word with our producer, William Keeley, who is down there directing a picture. Bill, may I introduce a lovely young starlet, Lonnie Fotre, whose hometown is Hollywood. Well, I know Lonnie's father well as a casting director. And I also know, Lonnie, how proud he is to see you getting places on your own. I used to wonder if I should go away to be discovered. Oh, not at all. Take Eleanor Parker, star of Warner Brothers' new picture, Cage. She was discovered in the audience of the Pasadena Playhouse. What was your first role, Lonnie? Well, I played the piano along with other young musicians. Well, that's a coincidence. Did you know Eleanor Parker wishes she could play the piano? I'll trade that for her dramatic ability. She's magnificent in cage. A gripping story. The shocking conditions in a woman's prison make a challenging document. She must have been happy to get out of the prison clothes she wears in the picture... I know she adores frilling nighties and lovely lacy slips. And knows how to keep them lovely. Like so many Hollywood stars, Eleanor Parker insists on gentle Lux Flakes care for lingerie and for all her nice things. And so do I, Mr. Kennedy. Colors look wonderful. You couldn't give pretty underthings better or safer care. Lux Flakes are so amazingly gentle, they actually keep colors lovely three times as long. Slips and nighties so new-looking, you can hardly believe they've been washed at all. I never think it pays to take chances with anything else. Smart girls agree with you. And actual washing tests back you up. Wrong washing methods soon fade soft colors, weaken delicate fabrics. That's why so many Hollywood stars insist on Lux Flakes. They know their nice things are safe with Lux Care. No other soap, no other washing product is kinder to colors. Anything safe in water is safe in Lux Flakes. Lux Care gives all nice things that lovely Lux look. Thank you for coming tonight, Lonnie Fortry. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. rises on Act Three of John Loves Mary, starring Ronald Reagan as John and Patricia Neal as Mary. It's just a moment later, and Mary, in a fresh flood of tears, has rushed into her bedroom and locked the door. Mary, Mary, I'm your mother, and you know I'm on your side, but you've got no right to act this way. No, you haven't, Mary, and I say it, and you know what I think of it. Thank you, sir. That's all right. I'm sorry you have to be subjected to all this, General. Oh, say, I married all three daughters. This is nothing. Well, I'm going to find a place to sit down, but not here. Would you like to see a movie? Oh, fine, Senator. 
We'll go to the Strand. Uh, the Strand? Yes, the senator wants to see himself in the newsreel. But, but, but uh, when you go to the movies, where do you sit? Upstairs or down? Uh, we sit in the balcony. I like to smoke. Why? Oh, nothing. I, I just think it's interesting where different people like to sit. Well, I, I, I'd better pick up my railroad ticket and get back into uniform. Uh, uh, goodbye, General Biddle. Uh, good luck, boy. Uh, Miss McKinley, Senator. But, John, aren't you even going to... Oh. Well, he's certainly in a big hurry to get to Nevada. Now, come on, Phyllis, get ready. Hey, John. John, wait a minute. Fred, you're just the guy I'm looking for. Huh? I just left him. The McKinleys and General Biddle are going to the Strand Theater. Yeah, well, well where's Lily? we got to get O'Leary out of the way before they... Who? Where's who? Lily, isn't she with you? She's with you. No, 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 she isn't. Well, what did you do with her? Well, I was driving her around in a taxi cab, showing her the city. Did you explain about your wife and the baby? Yeah, yeah, I did. What'd she say? Plenty. But I calmed her down. Then what happened? Well, she suggested we drive to the hospital so I could see my poor wife. Well? I got a baby boy, John. Seven pounds, eight ounces. Oh, Lily, what about Lily? Well, I left her in a cab, see? I told her to wait. But she didn't wait. Is that what you're saying? She's disappeared. She's hiding someplace. Hiding? Oh, what'll I do now about the divorce? If you can't find your wife, you have to wait seven years. Oh, well, we'll find her sometime before that. You saved my life. Now you've ruined it. We're even. Oh, don't say that, John. No, I'm even naming the baby after you. John Harold Taylor. He hasn't got a chance. Well, that's a fine thing to say. You're just excited, that's all. I'm sorry, Fred. Congratulations. Thanks. Now, look. What did Lily say when you left her in the cab? What was the last thing she said? Goodbye. <laughs> no, ahead of that. Well, she was talking to the driver. She wanted him to stop the meter while we were, well... Holy mackerel! Well? I went in the 76th Street entrance to the hospital. Well? But I came out to 77. Oh, no. Well, I was so excited about my baby, I didn't know where I was. And Lily may still be sitting in that cab. Come on, let's get over there. Yeah. And if I ever try to do a guy a favor again, as long as I live... Which probably won't be long if the senator gets a seat in the Strand balcony. That guy O'Leary... You have to remind me? Come on, let's find Lily. <laughs> you, Mother. How was the movie? Oh, just fine, dear. Feeling better. I'll live. Well, where is everybody? You're not alone. I thought Father and the General were with you. No, they left right after the newsreel. I don't know why, either. Where's John? Didn't he come back? No. No, he didn't. Oh. Well, he went to get his ticket, and you know how long that can take. Now, dear, this was just a lover's quarrel, and if I were... I wasn't aware there was a quarrel. I just can't understand why a man would rather pack crates at a storage depot in Nevada than be with the girl he loves. But he explained about this is not the John I sent overseas. That John would have dragged me to Nevada by the hair if necessary. Oh, you're not being reasonable. Well, the other John would have thought so. Oh, do stop referring to him as two different Johns. Mary, are you going to marry him or not? No, I don't think I am. And if he says... Oh, forget it, General. Forget it. I tell you, Senator, there are times when I wish I weren't in uniform. Uh, why, General, just look at you. Have you had an accident? I was attacked by a drunken usher in the men's room of the Strand Theater. <laughs> just, just look at me. But why? Why did he do it? I don't know why. He asked me whether I'd ever been to West Point, and when I said yes, he leaped on me. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Well, I hope you struck him back. Well, unfortunately, there's an article of war which says I can't strike anybody back. That I gave that manager a talking to. They haven't heard the end of this. Uh, where's Mary? She's still in her room. Now leave her alone. Mary! What is it? Please come out here. Yes, Father. My, but you look happy. Now, James, Mary's been through a great deal. Well, and I she's don't... going through a great deal more. In 20 minutes, the mayor of New York will be here. In half an hour, you'll be a married woman. But, but how is that possible? You can thank him. He's pretty bright for a general. But what... <laughs> What about the three-day waiting period? Now, that's a very good question. Who has to wait three days? Uh-huh. Civilians. A uh-huh. soldier can get married in one day. Yes, he thought of it during the movie. Well, Mary, you might thank the gentleman. Thank you. You don't sound very enthusiastic. Oh, I do appreciate what you've done, General Biddle. But marrying and separating immediately isn't exactly love's young dream. <laughs> Well, who says you're going to be separated? You and John could take the car. Have your honeymoon on your way to Nevada. You see, your young man's entitled to five days' travel time. So what do you think of your old father now, eh? Dad, I don't 
care to get married today. You don't care? What do you think you're doing? Buying a hat? <laughs> she doesn't care to, James, that's all. That couldn't be all. She's been crying into her pillow for four years. I'm sorry, Father, but this is something you just wouldn't understand. You're darn right about that. General, we should have stayed at the Strand and seen that picture. <laughs> but I, if you'll excuse me, I... Uh, I think I'll just run along. Oh, sit still. You married all three daughters. What's this? It's hard to say. <laughs> These things get pretty complicated. Now, now, Mary, you just tell Dad what's the matter. John doesn't love me. Did he tell you that? <laughs> he didn't have to. Then how do you know? I know. I think Mary feels that John should have insisted that she go to Nevada. But how could he? They weren't married. Well, I could have married him there. Well, he knew we wouldn't allow that. I'd have gone anyway. Well, I'm on his side about that. But we'll soon find out, won't we? John won't marry you if he doesn't love you. You just see if he backs out. No. Can you think of a better way to find out? Well, I'm not going to find out that way. It'd be too humiliating. Let him go to Nevada. I'll soon get a letter saying he's changed his mind. You're wrong, Mary. I can't help it. Well, we'll do anything you say, dear, but... Come in. Well, I got my railroad tickets. Oh, come in, John. Come in, Mr. Taylor. Thanks. Well, well, I have my baby. Fine, That's fine. Nice. Yeah, here, uh, everybody have a cigar. Uh, how was the show at the Strand? The newsreel was excellent. I photographed very well. I just wish we sat in the orchestra. Well, where did you sit, sir? The balcony. There was a drunk up there. A uh, drunk? Yes. He kept singing at the top of his lungs, show me the way to go home. Did, 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 did anyone show him? No. I tried to. What time did your train leave, John? Well, 9.30. Well, we can have dinner here and I'll take you to the station. Well, I'd rather you didn't, Mary. You see, the whole squad will be there. It, well, it'll be kind of embarrassing. You don't mind, do you? Oh, No. No, not at all. Kissing in railroad stations. I, I get a little self-conscious, don't you? I like it. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to go, Mary. If you think you ought to go, then go. You know what I was thinking? Yes, sir? That 60 days isn't a lifetime exactly. No, sir, it isn't. And after you get back, you could have a real wedding. Oh, yes, we could, sir. I don't mind a big wedding. That is, if it suits Mary. Well, dear. Dad... You said you had a surprise for us. What is it? A surprise? Well, Dad? John, a soldier can get married in one day with the Army's permission. Now, what do you think of that? <laughs> really? So you and Mary can get married, jump in my car, and off to Nevada on your honeymoon. You're allowed five days travel time. We even figured out the hotels you can stop at on the way. Yes, you can thank General Biddle for everything. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, you'd better start packing, Mary. Oh, that won't take me long. What's everybody looking at me for? <laughs> well, if there's something about the arrangements that doesn't suit you... Well, I, I was only thinking of it from Mary's angle, living out there in some room, and my coming in only once a week. Well, Mary doesn't seem to be objecting. Oh, oh, I'd love you to do it, Mary, but if you want a big wedding, and I, and I know your mother does, well, then maybe the best thing would be just to wait till I come back. Well, that's his answer. Sorry, Mary, I was mistaken. I guess I was mistaken, too. Well, John, I guess the quicker the goodbyes, the less embarrassment. It was nice knowing you, I think. It was nice knowing you, too, Fred. Thank you. Mary, I'm not going out of here. I'll thank you to leave, young man. No matter how this looks, you'll have to take my word for it. I do love you. Would you do me this one last courtesy? Please leave. If you don't go immediately, I'll... Freddie, Freddie, wherever did you get off to? Lily! Really? I've been riding around in a taxi for hours. The cabbie wants $14 for the fare and $8 for his own meter. His meter? Yes, it wouldn't stop. Oh, it was that nerve-wracking. tick a tick tick a tick tick But I stopped it. He's out in the hall waiting. Yeah, well, uh, uh, we better oh. go. Hello, Senator. How do you do? Uh, this is a friend of mine from Europe, Miss Lily Herbish. No. No, she is. John, she's not a friend of his, and she's not Miss Herbish. I'll tell you who she is. She's my wife. That's who she is. You, you, 
Your wife? Yes, my wife. I married her for Fred to get her to America. He saved my life. I wanted to do him a favor. Could I help it if he had a baby? I couldn't help it either. Surely that isn't all you have to say. No. I started off with just one little lie, but with your help, Senator, this darn thing has grown and grown with generals and war departments until I don't know where it's going to stop. It's gotten so Mary doesn't believe I love her. I do love you, Mary. I've never stopped loving you for one single minute. I know this is asking a great deal, but will you stand by until I straighten things out? Then we'll get married. Would you please, Mary? I don't know. Marriage seems to be a simple convenience to you. To me, it's something sacred. Oh, it is to me, too. If I'd only had time to think things out more clearly, all this never would have happened. Oh, I do hope you believe he's telling the truth. He only married me to bring me out to Freddy. I believe you. If there's been anything wrong between your John and me, may I drop dead on this very spot. What do you say, Mary? I'll go with you, John. Mary. I'd go any place with you. To the end of the world. Then for heaven's sake, why didn't you explain all this to me the day before yesterday when I came back from Washington? I, I couldn't. He didn't have his clothes on, Father. Oh! oh no, 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 <laughs> Lily, don't cry. I'm not crying because I'm unhappy. I like to see people in love. Maybe it's because I haven't had much luck in love myself. Here's you, and, and then it was me first husband. He died. He was an American, too. I didn't know you were married before. Why, you even knew him, Freddy. Lieutenant Victor O'Leary. O'Leary? Oh, no! As soon as he got a job, Victor was going to see him for me. And then I got a lovely letter from his mum telling me how Victor passed away. Double pneumonia. And his dying words were, Send my love to Lily. And tell her I'll see her up there. Yeah. In the balcony. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, Lily. Uh, Lily, what, what a nice movie cheer you up. Oh. Uh, something like Don Juan with Errol Flynn. Oh, he's one of my favorites. Well, then what are we waiting for? Oh, I'll get it. Oh, he's probably the cabbie. Hi, him up, will you see me? Hello, dog face. Well, 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 the smiling lieutenant. Come right in, lieutenant. Yeah, you're darn tootin' I will. I've been figuring things out, see, and there's something funny going on around here. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know this job I did for you guys is worth more than 50 bucks. Oh, sure, sure, come on in, lieutenant. There's some people I want you to meet. I could blow this whole thing wide open. You, you know that, don't you? <laughs> Lily. Well, I, I... Lily! I thought you were dead. I... I wish I was. Oh! <laughs> Before I Lily. get through with you, no, 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 maybe you'll Lily. get your wish, no, Mr. Oh, Luke Lily, Lily, you don't understand. Lily. You're getting this whole thing all mixed up. Lily, I've got to... Say, why, that looked like... Wasn't that? <laughs> yeah, yeah! Oh, articles of war or no articles of war, if I weren't in uniform... Well, I... I'm not in uniform, General, so let's go. I'll be at the Parkview Hospital, John. So will O'Leary. John, this is just some more of your shenanigans. It was you who brought that, that flunky in here impersonating an army officer. I ought to have you both caught, Marshal. I ought to... Uh, oh, there it is again, my headache. Oh, what a day. Never mind, dear. Now, come on. We'll go downstairs to the bar and get something to make you feel better. All right, then I'll be back. Yes, we'll be back after dinner. Oh, darling, darling. Mary. Oh, just a minute. Where are you going? Your gray suit's still in the closet. You're going to be a civilian. I won't see your face as long as you're in that uniform. Now, here, put this on. I know, darling. Hurry. I'll be out of this uniform so fast that it'll... Excuse me, I forgot my... Holy mackerel! <laughs> Here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. With news of a shower in Hollywood. We just say uh, heavy dew here in California, Libby. Oh, I don't mean rain, John. 
This was an engagement shower for a script girl at 20th Century Fox, given by several of the stars for whom she's worked. Maureen O'Hara's gift was a pair of downy, soft wool blankets in camellia pink. And Maureen added, as a special touch, a box of Lux Flakes. There's nothing safer for blankets. Gentle Lux Flakes care leaves them soft and fluffy. Maureen thought of Lux when she saw her own blanket being washed last week before they were put away for the summer. She insists on Lux Flakes care for blankets, curtains, and slip covers, as well as for her personal things. This is good blanket washing weather all over the country. If blankets are put away fresh and clean... There's less danger from moths. Here's the way blankets are handled in Maureen O'Hara's home. They're washed quickly in extra-rich, lukewarm Lux suds, then rinsed three times in water the same temperature as the suds. Then they're hung in the shade over several parallel lines and shaken from time to time to fluff up the nap. No other soap, no other washing product is safer for washable woolens. Get a big box of Lux Flakes tomorrow. Give your blankets, all your nice washables, that lovely Lux look. Now, here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. If Ronald Reagan and Patricia Neal will step down stage to the footlights, I know the audience is waiting to demonstrate how much they love John Loves Mary. <laughs> and in a few moments, we're going to have a real surprise for you. It has something to do with your closing show, doesn't it, Bill? Yes, we have a wonderful show next Monday to close a very happy and successful season. And I'm flying back to Hollywood myself for the occasion. The audience will miss the Lux Radio Theater even for eight weeks, Bill. But I'm glad Patricia and I got back from the East in time to be in on part of this season. Was it a business or a pleasure trip to New York, Ronnie? Business for the Screen Actors Guild. Patricia, you were in North Carolina, weren't you? Yes, Ronnie. At the premiere of the new Warner Brothers picture, Bright Leaf. It's about the great tobacco families and their fortunes. So naturally, it was held in Raleigh, North Carolina. Everyone had a delightful time. I hope you always put in a box of Lux Flakes when you travel, Pat. I certainly do. Lux Flakes are a must when a girl travels, Bill. What's your new Warner Brothers picture about, Ronnie? Does the title Storm Warning refer to tropical hurricanes? No, it's a different type of storm and even more exciting. The kind of storm that conflicts between people can create. And speaking of excitement, Bill... Isn't it time now for you to tell us about the closing night in the Lux Radio Theater season? All right, Patricia. Next week, we'll bring you one of your favorite screen comedies from the studios of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. The leading roles will be played by two of your Lux Radio Theater favorites, two of today's top Hollywood stars who made their first dramatic radio broadcast from the stage of the Lux Radio Theater. That delightful romantic team... Van Johnson and June Allison. And the play is their great screen success, The Bride Goes Wild. In selecting the play, I wanted something especially appropriate for this time of the year, and I think we have it. A great combination for our closing show of the season next Monday night. We wouldn't miss it, Bill, and I understand there will be something special for you personally to mark the completion of your fifth year as producer of the Lux Radio Theater. Good night. Good night. Good night. We'll see you both soon again. <laughs> For a truly luxurious beauty bath, screen stars say there's nothing like Lux toilet soap in the big bath size. The charming young star Wanda Hendricks says, This new bath cake makes my daily bath more luxurious than ever. The creamy, active lather leaves skin softer, smoother, gives me all over Lux loveliness. And the perfume is delightful, a flower-like fragrance that clings. You, too, will enjoy this satin-smooth bath cake Wanda Hendricks recommends. The lather is so rich and abundant, even in hardest water. See if you don't step from your Lux toilet soap beauty bath relaxed and refreshed, sure of charm. Next time you shop, be sure to get this new bath size. See for yourself why nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Van Johnson and June Allison in The Bride Goes Wild. This is William Keeley bidding you good night.
heard in our cast tonight were Herbert Vigran as Fred, Alan Reed as McKinley, and Bill Johnstone, Constance Cavendish, Eleanor Audley, George Neese, Herbert Butterfield, and Eddie Marr. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Flakes, the safe, gentle care recommended 33 to 1 by makers of nice washables. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear The Bride Goes Wild, starring Van Johnson and June Allison. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations.